Before we begin learning each letter in Engrosser script, I would like to go over why it is not copper plate, the drills that I do, and the materials that I would suggest you acquire to learn the script. This is from Mastering Copper Plate Calligraphy by Eleanor Winters. And this is the D showcased for copper plate. And you can see that the size of the bowl is very big. And this main stroke down here is mostly straight. This is Lupfer's exemplar in the engrosser script. This is in the Zanari manual. You can see the bowl here is rather skinny. And this line here, the main shade down, is a compound curve. So if the style of lettering in the Zanarian manual is what you are looking to achieve, what you want to learn is called engrosser script and it's not copper plate. The term copper plate used today is incorrect. Copper plate is a script engraved on a thin sheet of copper. So if you're not engraving on a thin sheet of copper, you're not writing copper plate. This, what you see here in the Zanarian manual is engrosser script and is equivalent with engraving with pen and ink on paper. In what modern day conceptions of copper plate is, this D would be written in one stroke. In engrosser script, however, as soon as we change pressure from swell to hairline, we lift our pen to create this gradual transition. Lubfer said, the pressure you apply begins to differ, then you need to readjust your pen to reapply the pressure. So this letter D would be done in multiple strokes instead of one. Engrosser script is nothing like handwriting. It's a fine and delicate art, and it requires much attention to each single stroke. In addition to what I just mentioned, copper plate was not taught at the Zanarian College. What was taught is what you see here, and it's called engrosser script. So it's important that we call it by its rightful name. I received many questions about drills. What drills to do when we learn the script? I see a lot of people doing a whole page of underturns and overturns, like this. So on and so forth. And I've seen continuations of page of this. It is not wrong to practice underturns and overturns. It is important to maintain the same amount of pressure, the same amount of distance, and the same slant. However, if you do not have an issue with your consistency in your letter M, letter N, letter U, there really isn't a need for you to do this. I personally do not do any drills. And I once asked Senior Master Penman William A. Lilly about what drills he does. And this is the answer he gave me. He said, if I start writing and I feel like I'm just not getting it, I lie on the floor flat and close my eyes for 20 minutes to relax. Essentially, our conversation brought me to understand is that if you write enough, there is no need to do drills. Your writing becomes your drills. Now, as a beginner, there are some things that you can choose to practice if you are having trouble with certain aspects of your letter. And here are some common things that I suggest my students to practice based on the work they show me. One of which is oval. So what I would suggest doing is do ovals that are the size of one row tall, two row tall, three row talls, and so forth. So start with the shading, hairline, shade, lift the pen, hairline, complete the oval. And this, if I add a spur and I add an intro stroke, this is the letter O. And the oval is the foundation of all of the script. 
No one is really used to pushing an oval hairline like what we did here. So in order to make our letters include ovals, we have to train our muscles to get used to pushing hairline ovals. So if we do it two spaces tall, when you get used to shading the downstroke, try pushing the downstroke up and shading it down. No matter what size of oval you do, how tall or which side of shade, note that they all have to be on the same slant when we bisect the ovals. So you want to train yourself when you do these exercises to maintain your consistency. There really is no need to fill a page up with these. Practice mindfully, even if you just did four ovals and they're all perfect ovals, perfect smooth hairlines, no square turns, no bent in your curves. You will have gained that muscle memory. Another stroke that I suggest my students to practice is the compound curve. Now a compound curve is basically an S curve. Hairline, shade, hairline. To judge if your compound curve is good or not, ask yourself if this can be in a diet ad, if it reminds you of a of a slender body shape like so. What is interesting about the compound curve is that here and here, they form two potential ovals and these ovals are the same size. So what you can practice is do the compound curve at one row height, small compound curve, two, and so on and so forth. You can practice compound curves up to five spaces tall, this becomes the foundation for your letter J. which many beginners struggle with because of this long, tall compound curve. The same applies to practicing compound curve hairlines. And pushing it up at different heights. I find that beginners sometimes have trouble drawing straight lines at the 55 degree slant. So it is helpful if you pencil in this slant and just draw straight lines on the slant like so. This will be helpful for your lowercase m, n's, p, t, d, and so on. So the rule is do not mindlessly do drills. Do what you're having trouble with. Break down the letter that you are having trouble with and practice that part. There's no need to fill up a page if you understand what you're doing. As far as materials for learning the script, I would suggest that you purchase the Zanarian Manual of Alphabets and Engrossing. It is available on John Yule Books. And in the beginning pages, you have some of the best instructions by Lubfer himself on Engrosser script. And you have wonderful examples of past masters writing for you to study. This was a textbook at Zanarian College and I would not suggest you learn this script without this book.